So this talk, we're going to talk about target independent uh, integer arithmetic specifically, because floating points are more complicated. Uh, let's talk about some motivation and like why do we want to do target independent integer arithmetic? Well, some programming languages and other applications tend to have integer types that have a target dependent width. You think of your C types, your ints, your longs, your shorts, your whatevers. And oh, well, the solution is easy. We'll just put a target on the IR. Oh, look, now we know what how big int is or whatever. Um, there are problems to this. And if we want to do like progressive compilation, where we pre-compile the source code down to a particular level and then distribute this, well, if we just attach a target to the IR, and from the very beginning, the only portable version of the code is the source. And you can't really like distribute C++ source code and like JIT it, for example. I mean, you, you, I mean, you can, but it's not fantastic. So what we really want is to pre-compile the program to a particular state. And then this is now, we serialize it. And this is now the portable form of the IR that gets sent around and we can do stuff with it. And a particular application that you can think of, this is the nicest slide in the presentation, by the way, is you have an ML model, you have pre-compiled kernels, and you have like a runtime, and you bundle this together, and you ship it onto different nodes or whatever that may have various different platform configurations, like Amazon's trying to sell you their underused compute resources. And then based on the inputs and the target, you JIT sections of your kernel library and good to go. And obviously, if you can pre-compile as much as possible, then this is slightly faster, and it can improve like tail latency or something. Um, but we don't want to just ignore the target independent integer arithmetic in our code, especially if it's quite prevalent until later on, because we want to do optimizations on the high level and low level IR, um, knowing about you know what is like one plus four if the integer type behind the one is variable width based on the target. So one ex one solution is oh why don't we just try to use the maximum width? Well the issue is like some types don't have a maximum width, like the C standard will say, oh, it's at least you know, two bytes. It's at least four bytes. OK, well, in practice, we can just say, let's use 128 bytes or an arbitrary precision width. The problem is this doesn't work. Because if you compute the math at some arbitrary precision width or some very, very high you know, maximum width, then you truncate the results. You get a different result than have, you'd, you'd computed it at like actually at 16-bit 16, uh, 16 arithmetic. So this doesn't work. It also doesn't work if you use like the minimum. Um, but let's what we really get here is like some equation that if we compute this op plus add subtract division whatever uh, at arbitrary position width and then we truncate the result to a particular bit width, this is the same result as computing it with the truncated inputs. If this operation f satisfies this property, then we can always um, we can always fold it right so for constant propagation. And really, this boils down to some kind of like, I don't know, someone told me about cyclic group arithmetic. But basically, it's the sign insensitive operations where you know the computation of a value of a bit at a particular point doesn't depend on the higher bits. And then otherwise, you have to check the sign bit and stuff. So this works for like add, subtract, for two's complement, uh, multiply, left shift, you know, those operations. It doesn't work for the sign sensitive ones, division, floor, min, max, right shift, and comparison even, because comparison is sign sensitive. But we still want to fold division. If you do like two divided by four, right? We still want to fold that. And it turns out that you could like derive this complicated equation on, oh, like if you know the, the x and y are within this domain, then you can fold it. Well, you can just plug it in and check. Uh, easy. Right? So that's the that's the foundation behind the MLR index dialect, because somebody sitting right there realized that the index dialect or the arithmetic dialect and MLIR is uh, not folding index computations correctly because it was doing it at 64 bits. And the uh, MLR index dialet is actually backing the mojo int type, capital I int. And um, so the PSA here is don't use the arith dialect for index computations. We can apply the same logic to integer range analysis. And uh, this work was actually done by Christoph, uh, not me, but uh, we, you know, it's based off the same principles that we can compute the ranges using the, a particular reasonable maximum width and then we check, you know, does if we truncate the range, does it match? And it, the same logic here applies to like the add, subtracts, whatever. So we can always do integer range analysis at the maximum width on these operations. And then the other thing is, if we if it doesn't fit, so if the property is not satisfied, instead of just saying, "Oops, integer range analysis failed on this op," we actually take the union of the ranges computed at a maximum width and some like minimum width. 
because because you're truncating it, you actually know that the result is somewhere between these ranges. And so you don't have to just give up. And what this means is that if you're doing like, oh, compare it to the maximum value of this integer type, you can actually still fold that even though that maximum value has a huge range. That's it. Thanks.